Online Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! What is up, everybody? My name is Chloe West, and we are here at After Buzz TV doing a spotlight on for the brand new horror film coming out this Friday the 13th. It is called Girl House, and we have the star of the film, Slane, here, who is also, what you're listening to, is the track that he released because you are also a rapper, and so this is on the soundtrack. It's yes, pretty it awesome. Is. Welcome yep. to the show. Cool, thanks. Thanks for being here. Um, this song is called Enemy, The Enemy. Yeah, it's called The Enemy. It's on the soundtrack. Soundtrack just came out on Tuesday. Movie comes out on Friday. Yeah, so. it's a Friday the 13th, and it's also a special Friday the 13th because it happens to be the Friday before Valentine's Day, which I just think is great, and especially for this film. Now, this film is called Girl House. It's a Hollywood. Halloween style slasher where a girl, you know, is she's in college and she doesn't have a lot of money and so she decides to move into this home where they broadcast, you know, each of the there's a few girls that live in this house and they broadcast out to subscribers and it's a porn subscription site. And you play one of the subscribers who then ends up turning into a killer and a murderer and you come and you find these girls and now there's now this protected house that they lived in and that they were having so much fun in now sort of becomes this hell house what yeah, was it haunted house. yeah what was it like playing that character um well i mean you know it was definitely a different experience in the past like i've played uh, a lot of criminals and, and kind of stuff that was right in my wheelhouse to the point, uh, you know, where people are like, you're kind of playing yourself on on <laughs> screen. So this that was why, you know, I was really drawn to this role. It was something to do that was a lot different than anything I've ever done. And, you know, I, th I just think it also is kind of so relevant to, you know, with social media and the Internet now, everybody is like, connected you know people have a direct line to you at all times right instagram facebook yeah, and twitter you know, i think m mostly everybody has kind of been on like the wrong end of a creepy scenario and uh this kind of just ups the ante on that yeah this definitely i like i like the description of a halloween style because it definitely you you wear a mask when you get into the house and it is so creepy and you seem larger than life when you're in this house and you definitely scare these poor girls <laughs> to death some of them literally i promise i won't you know ruin anything because i think with a great horror film you know there needs to be the suspense and so i won't say anything that you can't you know read out from the trailer but it's definitely your character seems larger than life and the movie sort of sets you up as like from a kid you were like this scary murderer and so it how what was it like preparing for this role? Like you said, like you've been in, you've acted in the town and things like that when Gone Baby Gone. So you're sort of this like Boston criminal. I hear your accent in right. in the headphones, and it's so coming into this where you yeah, it was a little easier to do, to do those movies. I had a, a whole life worth of research. You know, it was <laughs> it was kind of what I grew up around, and you know, I never robbed a bank, but yeah, I knew people that did. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it was it was. It was a lifetime of research. It was very easy to make that transition to those characters. With this one, I kind of had a look at, like, what the, you know, because you see the character before before I don the mask, and you see who he is before that. So I think that's kind of a little bit different from most slasher movies. So Definitely. I'm, like, you know, I had to kind of connect with the character on that level. Obviously... And you feel bad for your character, which I think is also different. Like you feel bad at first when they start blocking you, yeah, you and see things him when like he's that. Yeah, you a kid, and then you mm -hmm. see, you know, you kind of see the evolution you of, like of empath what's happened. Empathy to him. for him a so little bit. I wanted to connect. <laughs> you know, it's impossible to connect all the way with a character like that. But 
you know, the mechanics of what the character actually is doing is different than what you have to emote on screen, I think. So I kind of tried to internalize times in my life where I was ostracized or felt less than and or was heartbroken because I thought this character at the end of the day was really like a heartbroken, tragic figure. I yeah. think so, yeah. So I, I wanted to kind of internalize what times in my life when I felt like that and then kind of feel that and then I thought uh, through the scenarios that the movie sets up you would kind of it would be easy to see that because I didn't speak a lot in the movie neither so it was, it was just a lot of I felt like if I internalized all these feelings that that would come out very cool I think it absolutely did and I think that's something that was interesting about this is we do yeah you don't say a lot of things but we we know what you're thinking and we know what's going on and we feel bad and then you sort of turn into this crazy killer and the movie sort of it starts off with a quote from Ted Bundy and about how he knows like a lot of people willing to do very bad things and they're also somehow connected to porn and what do you think yeah, of that quote? they've all been addicted to porn. I thought that was an interesting way to start the movie too. And you know, it's, it's again like very relevant uh, you know, I remember growing up, porn wasn't accessible. You know, like you would find a, a dirty magazine and you would put it in the stash. You would hide it somewhere and like. Well, and you paid for it. That was which well, well, you know, a you lot of people don't now. Well, well, that's a different issue. But I mean, <laughs> you couldn't buy it when you were a kid. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you would, you would have to like a friend would get or an one older from, brother or old, something. Yeah, exactly, and that was the one you were rocking with for a while because <laughs> you know it wasn't accessible. But now, like you have all this this whole world of porn. At at your fingertips, like kids, are, you know, the a whole generation grew up on porn, so it's it definitely raises some questions like that too. And you know, th th there's a scene where uh, Ali Coburn's character is talking about it's not that big of a deal anymore. It's just porn. It's fantasy. Or, you know. Yeah, that's in the trailer when she says that, and she's trying to explain it, like how explain it to who, the guy who ends up becoming the hero of the film. And yeah, that it's it's not such a big deal. It's fine, whatever. And I sort of think that's also how the internet has changed a lot of things. Everything is, eh, it's fine, it's whatever. Everything is out there. Yeah, well, um, the shock value for anything is going completely out the window because we've all seen it all now. You know, it's like... Absolutely. Open up your email and somebody sends you a link of some real repugnant. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's just uh, it's definitely the internet has changed things in so many ways, and porn is definitely one of them. And this, I think, this movie's a great film for you know, uh, it's a great way to like bring in messages of the internet into you know into film and into horror films, and uh, and it makes it scary and it makes you think twice like oh yeah maybe maybe it is a bigger deal and it is a little scarier because people are still out there and I thought that was really interesting that they decided to start the film with that quote and it's a little eerie and then it sort of sets up the whole film and with the beginning with your character as a child it really sets up the whole film and I as a someone who watches films a lot I felt like oh I know what's going to happen I know once I saw your character come on screen and you're, you have the best character name it's Loverboy which is just your username which I also think is really a cool interesting choice that we don't really learn your name ever it's just Loverboy this whole time and you're this murdering character as lover boy I think that's I think that's great um and yeah so and then you also did I want to talk about because you're also a rapper yep. so I want to talk about you sort of juggling this dual career because you're still rapping and acting because you have the track on the soundtrack was that did you approach the director and well we talked about it early on and, and when we were making the movie the the producer and director uh, trevor asked me um you know what i thought about doing some songs for it or whatever and you know, I thought he was going to fall off the radar with it. He didn't ask me until like a month and a half ago, yo, are you going to do that song? I was like, yeah, we're kind of, you know, at the 11th hour now. But we came, we, we put it together and uh, we shot a video for it. The video comes out on Friday. Oh, the video will come out the same day as the, the film. Same, same day as the movie. You know, technology, I know we're talking about one aspect of it, but the other thing now is, 
you know, it's changed everything across the board now. So now, like, this movie comes out on Friday. It's available to people, like, across the board. Like, you can get it right in your own house. You can get it on iTunes. Yeah, it's, so it's available on video on demand, but it's also coming out in theaters. Yeah, it's in theaters, too. But, you know, it's great how you can put something out, and it just becomes instantly available to everybody, kind of. Yeah, I think this movie, for those of you who maybe, you know, are doing an anti-Valentine's Day weekend, I think this is the movie for you, I guess. <laughs> I think it's a great Friday the 13th film, but it's also a great anti-Valentine's Day, sort of, because it's got the love and the porn and everything mixed in, and it's like, yeah, let's 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 watch this slasher film. Yeah, and watch it with your girlfriend <laughs> if you're about to break up with her for Valentine's Day. Oh, there you go, yeah, on Friday the 13th. That's perfect, yeah. Just like a little, a little like, cue to her, like, yeah, this, this is what's happening. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's great. And so where, what select cities is this going to be coming out in? I don't have all that information, so I don't. I don't know, but I. I assume I'll probably have it sent to me, and I'll, on uh, demand. I'll send it from my from my cool, link, cool. From my, uh, social media. And what is your Twitter so people can find Slane's it? Slane's World. Slane's World. All right, cool. Yeah, so it's definitely on video on demand, which is great, and you can just get it on iTunes. And that's one of my favorite ways to watch movies now. I don't know about you, but it's nice to not have to leave the couch. Yeah, to I watch mean, I your think film. everybody's kind of <laughs> kind of on the same tip, and, and you know, you go to the theater now to see movies that like you need to go to the theater to see, mm-hmm. have, you know, some kind of crazy special effects or whatever but you know I like to who doesn't like to watch a movie in their own house exactly and let's talk more about Girl House for a second Uh, when you guys were filming this and I I don't want to give too much away but what was it like doing the murder scenes because as you've said before you've played characters that you know rob banks and things they're criminals but what was it like doing like a murder like the murder scenes and how do those play out and not every actor gets to do horror films and gory murder scenes so was that fun was it like a lot of makeup you're playing with yeah it was a lot of it was a lot of work on on some of those and uh the mask was just really so uncomfortable. Oh no! <laughs> you know, I I had worn masks in um, in the town before, but you know we did two of the robbery scenes with with masks on the nun masks, which became pretty famous. <laughs> and uh, you know you could take them off in between the scenes, so as soon as it was cut, you could pull it up. But with this uh, movie, the mask tied on in the back, and like it took like a pretty elaborate oh, setup wow. to get it on. So it was brutal. Wow. It, was, it was tough to breathe. You weren't filming in the <laughs> summer, were you? No, it was, it was super it was, hot. It was cold. It was in Canada and it was December, but you know, you still have the lights on you and everything. It was definitely an uncomfortable setup. Wow. And then doing the rest, the scenes with the girls where you are murdering them and things like that. Was that like? Did it, did it feel silly? Did it like what is it? What's it like for those people who just enjoy watching film and? kind of want to know, you know, I mean, it's, what goes into all the, like, SFX stuff of it. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, with stuff like that, it's it's mechanical, so it's not, like, it's not, you know, like, where the scene where I have to, uh, where I have to, you know, where, where the girls are making fun of me and I, and I lose my mind and stuff, like, that's, like, that was an emotional scene I had to dig into. But, like, with the murder, it's not like you necessarily have to internalize murdering somebody. You have a mask on, and mm-hmm. it's, like, kind of the mechanics of, of the horror movie. It's not so much, um, you know, where you're You're more, really like, going from point A to point B a little bit? Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Well, this film, it, you've, I'm guessing you've seen the whole thing already. Of course. Now, did it scare you, even though you were doing all of those scenes? Because I know once films come together and the soundtrack is on it, are you someone that gets scared by horror films? Or I don't really get scared by horror films. No. So, I mean, I'm not a horror movie junkie. You know, I, I, I was scared by some horror movies when I was a kid. Um... You know, but I, I really think the story works in this for this, a lot of the reasons that we were saying with, you know, just how it's really relevant culturally, kind of. Mm-hmm. And that's what attracted me to this movie more than it was just like a slasher film. You know, I thought it, it had a good story, too. And I think the story is what really works in this. Yeah, I agree. I think the story is what scares you the most in this. But- and you can kind of relate to... Um, you know, Allie's character and and her relationship with her boyfriend and the way that this website is kind of affecting that. And he went, you know, without giving too much of the movie away, it um, 
it, it's definitely like a relatable. The whole thing is you can you can like put well, yourself in that situation. Absolutely, you can see why this girl would want to move into this house. You know, she's like she's down on her luck and she doesn't have a lot of money and she doesn't want to be leaning on her mother anymore who also is down on her luck and she just lost her father so yeah you can absolutely relate and you're like I get it I get why you would move in and and so that just sets it up in general because the audience is already on her side and you know you're like yeah I feel I feel that like because you know times are tough and the economy is down so people are like yeah and I'm sure when people watch this they're like not gonna lie I've thought about it you know they're like I've thought about about joining that side yeah sure make some money real fast who doesn't like quick money but I also love when films always go to the yeah if you can make money fast you know something else might happen you know there's always that other side of the coin right. and this other side of the coin is terrifying <laughs> absolutely and you know I also think that most people can relate to that because even if you're not working on a, uh, you know, for a cam site or a porn site or whatever you want to call it, um, everybody has like these public images now with their Facebook page and their Twitter and, uh, and Instagram, and everybody has been kind of you know had something weird happen where somebody's stalking them or sending them crazy messages and stuff like that. So I think you know everybody can kind of put themselves in that position in the movie. Absolutely, yeah, and it makes it just that much more scary. And now you're thinking about all the things your parents told you about not posting on Facebook, and you're like, I should have listened. <laughs> this could happen to me. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite part from this movie, like a specific scene or anything that you either loved filming or when you watched it, you were pretty excited about how it came together? Um, I had one that I was terrified of watching back because, like, I really wanted to, you know, like completely let go of the fact that I have to look cool on camera. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because when you're shooting guns and and playing playing a gangster, it's different. Like, right. You want you want to you look cool doing that. But this character was like a monster, and I had it like just like a ugly and kind of nerdy. Like yeah, he was withdrawn, outcast. ugly monster, and I was like, I had to like completely lose all my inhibitions for that. And then. You know the scene where I'm like I'm I talk the only talking I really do is to the mannequin that's kind of in my mm -hmm. in my uh, in my lair or whatever. <laughs> so uh, you know I was lover kinda, boy's I was, lair. I was horrified to watch that scene back. I don't want to give it away, but. I was like, oh, man, this is going to look crazy, you know? Was that hard to really, like, the small amount of dialogue that you had, you know, to not be getting, like, reactions off of other actors? You know, a lot of times actors talk about, you know, the other actor giving them so much, and that's how they were able to pull off their performance. Was that difficult? Yeah, I mean, that was the challenge to this role, and I, I knew that going in, and, um, you know, that's why when I told you, like, I, internal, I had to internalize a lot of the stuff for these scenes, and... You know, because as much as I, you can study a character or whatever or, or think how you're going to play it, like, to actually be able to do it on screen without saying anything, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. the words can kind of move what you think of a character or whatever, but to have none of that dialogue, really, and just kind of... I really had a, like... It, it was kind of an emotional... Uh, the scenes specifically, like, when I'm in front of the computer in the lair and then talking to the, the mannequin and stuff, that was, like, definitely... It was challenging. Yeah, I, I can only imagine... Did you... When you guys were filming, because so much of it happens where either the girls are talking to the computer or you're talking... You know, you're with the computer. Uh, was it a blank screen? Yes, or did it was you... a blank screen. It was a green screen. Oh. Because they need to be able to do that in the effects afterwards. So it wasn't... So is that must have been difficult as well because as a viewer we can't tell at all and you guys are reacting off of each other. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we're like, oh, that's great. So is the director like yelling their lines yeah, yelling at you? Out directions, like said directions. <laughs> then she says this, you know, like. Yeah, that stuff must like that, that must be really difficult then to stay in the emotion, stay on, you know, the computer screen or the, you know, and then they're just there's nothing there. Yeah, we shot that stuff like over a couple of days. It was definitely. That was that was the most challenging part of the work. Yeah, and I think that's I think even just those scenes are like how we've been saying like just really they really relate to everyone nowadays. You know, have it, living their lives through like the screen, and I think that's really I just I just love that this film turned that into something scary and real. And yeah. I was telling you earlier like I'm not the biggest fan of horror films because I you know can imagine them so well and this one seems so real so it makes it even scarier because 
<laughs> you know, now you're like, every time I log on to my computer, I'm going to be a little scared. Uh, yeah, and you looked at me weird when I came in. I never <laughs> saw it. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> um, awesome. And so are you working on anything else coming up? I'm uh, recording some music now. I have a couple other independent films that I did that are that are in the can and coming out later this year. Are you playing scary characters in those too? I or? Always, they always want me to be a scary guy. Yeah. I'm like <laughs> you seem so bear. nice. Yeah. This is <laughs> that's that's I, on screen though. You do not seem nice, and all the, in the films I've seen you in, yeah, it's, you definitely can play that scary character. Uh, so you're playing scary guys, gangsters again, or? Yeah. I mean, that's what kind of what I've been doing lately. But I'm definitely. Um, you know, I'm a baby with the acting. You know, I, I got into it through the music, and um, and I love doing it. And uh, you know, I hopefully have a, a good future ahead of me doing a wide array of different stuff. That's what I'm. You I'm plan to for. continue to act and oh, ra- do music and acting. Absolutely. Oh, very cool. And what are the similarities between the two? Because they seem like you have to, you know, when you're rapping, you take on a little bit of a character, even if it's a character of yourself. Yeah, but they're both storytelling, but they're definitely different mediums. I think, um, you know, with live performance, you you obviously have to project to a much bigger crowd that's right in front of you. Uh, well, not a bigger crowd uh, as far as like watch people. More people will watch a movie than see you perform live that night. But when the what I mean is when the crowd is right in front of you, you have to project. You have to be a little more, bit more deliberate. And um, with a movie, you know, the screen is when somebody sees it in the theater is you know whatever seventy feet across or whatever. And it's yeah, just it, your face. It's that larger large. than life, so every <laughs> movement is means a lot. So you know, subtlety is big. I feel like with acting and uh, you know it's a different way to tell a story that like I said you got to internalize a lot more stuff and do you it, think your different. acting career has helped your music um, or influenced your music I don't think like the craft of acting has changed the way I made music and uh, I don't really think um, the opposite is true neither but you know I think the acting stuff has turned some more people on to my music like mm-hmm. on a different on a different level of things but uh you know, I just really like to do both. At the end of the day, I'm a storyteller, and, and both of these careers give me kind of the the ability to to tell stories in different ways, and that's what I love to do. Awesome. Well, we can catch you. We can catch Slane, and everybody can. Video on demand. Friday the 13th, the day before Valentine's Day. And I just, I love that this movie is coming out on that same weekend. So if you're not seeing Fifty Shades of Grey, which I recommend you guys, instead of seeing that, you go ahead and just see this (laughs) slasher film because it's way more rad than Fifty Shades. And it's called Girl House. It's out on Friday the 13th. Trust me, guys, you'll be able to find it. It's super easy. It's definitely all over the place. And thank you so much for coming in and I hope you continue to play scary characters and maybe one day get to play the teddy bear that you've seen but it's definitely fun and you pull it off playing those scary characters because trust me you guys you're going to be freaked out when you see this Uh, and so the movie is Girl House again this is Slane thank you so much for coming in I'm Chloe West and we will see you guys here next time on After Buzz TV From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.